just so everyone understands, yeah. Robert Kennedy. Grandfather. Grandfather. John Kennedy. Grandfather's brother, so great uncle. Great uncle. Ted Kennedy, great, great uncle, uncle also. Yep. Arnold Schwarzenegger, was he like Uncle Terminator? Uh, yeah, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Right. <laughs> More on the Terminator side. Is that something, is the family close enough that you like knew Arnold Schwarzenegger as an uncle? Uh, so, yes, I did. Um, obviously, um, my cousin Maria and Arnold have separated, right? Right, so, yeah, uh, I know, I read that. Yes. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> So, uh, I haven't seen him in a while, but... Right, yeah, yes. sure, yeah, yes. yeah. So I was with Maria earlier. Oh, you uh, were? Oh, I good. was, I oh, was. very nice. Yes. Oh, so you guys so. really are a tight group, aren't you? Yeah, there's a lot of us, but we're pretty tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah there are a lot of you, and yeah. yet, a lot of you go into politics, and I was thinking about this thing, and I was wondering, like, when you're a kid, and I'm talking about, you know, like, 11 years old, mm -hmm. did somebody in your family say to you, listen, be careful about what you do, because you're a Kennedy, <laughs> and one day you might want to run for office, one, you know, yeah. eyes are on you, so behave yourself. No. No, nobody did that. <laughs> no. No, uh, there was no. Really? Uh, yeah. I would do that no. if I was a Kennedy. I yeah, mean, well, um, I'm not, by the way. Right. My parents met at a bowling alley. No one, <laughs> we have no airports named after us. It turned out okay. Right? It turned out okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, for the uh, most part. So, yeah, no. Um, you uh, grew up in a public family, right? And mm -hmm. so, um, for the, the triumphs have been very public, um, our shortcomings, like, Every American family, um, we all have them, and they've been public too. And so, yeah, you kind of just grow up around the fact that what you do is going to be under more of the public eye. But that's, Jimmy, just kind of like the way it is. Uh, Did you know when you were young that this is something that you want to do? You wanted no, to go into public no. service? No. No. So public service, yeah, probably. Um, I was a Peace Corps volunteer before I ended up running for office. Um, Can I ask a very, very stupid question? What, sure, please. What goes on in the Peace Corps? I mean. <laughs> I hear Peace Corps, it's I go, I just, code. I just, yeah. I know it's not for me, but I also, <laughs> like, do they come to your house and they take you to another country? No, you actually gotta get on a plane. You have to get on a plane and go there. Plane. This is um, voluntary though, right? It is. It's not that's a punishment. A, that's the volunteer part. Okay, right. all right. Um, so, uh, uh, look, for, of the experiences I've had in my life, there hasn't been one that has been more impactful for me. Well, it's just um, a very positive experience. It's a very positive experience. Yeah. Now look, it's not for everybody. Um, you spend, I spent two and a half years or so in the Dominican Republic, um, intermittent electricity, intermittent running water. Um, Do you habla espanol? Si, hablo espanol. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, by the way, and, and this is, I don't want to be a profiler, but if I were to line you up with a thousand other people, <laughs> And they said, which one of these men speaks Spanish? You'd be the last one I pick. <laughs> which actually has its benefits at times. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. You can bust some people on it, which is great when it happens. Um, I, I, I've traveled through Latin America quite a bit, and you do get some quizzical um, looks when I start speaking Spanish with a heavy Dominican accent, and people go, gay? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it's, um, it's, a, it's an organization close to my heart. It's uh -huh. one that uh, does, I think, an awful lot of good around the world. Um, and it's still uh, alive and doing great work. So yeah, I'm, I was thrilled to be part of it. Um, and uh, particularly given the challenges that we have around the world and in Washington today, having uh, the opportunity to go to a country that you haven't been in, a language you don't speak, a, a, a culture that's a bit foreign, and actually throw yourself at it with everything you got and learn about it and try to serve that community has been um, a really valuable thing. Yeah, I think it is. It's probably a great experience. It's one that I and no one in my family will ever have, but... Um, but... You know, the interesting thing, though, there's no age limit on volunteers. <laughs> is you that actually, right? You could sign up today. Could you imagine me? <laughs> but you realize if I did that, everyone would think it was a joke. <laughs> Nobody would believe I went to volunteer for the Peace Corps. I'm just saying, you know, if this doesn't work out for you, Peace Corps isn't. Is that why you're here? Are you here to get rid of me? <laughs> <laughs> I. Um... When are you going to run for president? When is this happening? <laughs> I, mean, come on, man. It's... I came here today to hope that you would announce and I could be your VP. <laughs> I don't think. I think it would be better the other way around. But <laughs> this is a question you get asked all the time, and a lot of it is because of your name. A lot of it is because you gave the response to the State of the Union address. The Democratic Party chose. Did they choose you, or was this a punishment? Because usually that goes badly. So that's an interesting question, and the answer to that is uh, I actually think unclear. Um, <laughs> so regardless, I got asked, and I was thrilled to do it. I got asked by uh, Leader Pelosi about. Um, a week before the speech. Oh, that's all. Wow. Yeah, um, she uh, 
pulled me off the house floor, cleared out her office, kicked all of her staff out, and then um, I thought I was in trouble. Uh -huh. and, um, and then she asked me to do it. So I immediately obviously said yes, and then walked out of her office and went, oh my God, my career might be over, because <laughs> everybody struggles with his speech. Yeah, so, Bobby um, Jindal, um, uh, exactly. Mario, uh, what's, whatever his Marco, name is, Marco Rubio. Rubio. Yeah. Right. See, look, what uh, happened. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, the good news, the biggest takeaway for me from that experience is it has um, solidified for me the generosity, the compassion, the caring of the American public. I have gotten tubes of chapstick from every damn corner of this yeah, country. Yeah, I bet, yeah. Didn't matter what I said. I'm sure you're yeah. tired of talking about the chapstick and the shiny lips and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, but, but it, it will never It die. didn't matter what you said because you did. You gave a very well-received speech. You were very smart in doing it in front of a group of people, which usually it's so sterile and it's like a, just you're set up to yeah, fail. Yeah, I can't do a hostage video that well. Right, there's yeah. some people that, that can. Um, I'm not one of those folks, so I needed a live audience to be able that to was smart. actually see. Do you think we will ever return to a day, and I'm assuming there was a day, I'm not really sure, where Republicans and Democrats actually work together in a meaningful way in, in government? Uh, yeah, I do, I hope so. There's, there's more of that going on than the public sees. Some of my closest friends in Washington are in fact Republicans. Who's your best friend that's Republican? <laughs> <laughs> my best friend would be actually an interesting one for your last guest. Uh, is this guy Mark Wayne Mullen, who's a former ultimate fighter from Oklahoma. Wow, really? Yeah. That's a good best friend to have, because if you get beat up, he'll go kick everyone's ass. <laughs> yeah, um, so he got me to sign on to some bill about um, protection of ultimate fighters in, 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 uh, in the industry. Um, and people wonder why I signed on. It's like, wait, when you bring in a whole string of ultimate fighters that can kill you 16 ways from Tuesday, you and sign. actually sign on it, you sign. Yeah, you right? sign anything. Yeah, exactly. Well, That's maybe fine. that's a good plan for Trump, because we got a lot of problems. <laughs> We bring in some ultimate fighters, and maybe he'll do what needs to be done. Do you get yeah. your Trump news the way we all do, just from Tweet. like the, uh, t Twitter and Tweet. and then do you guys? And I, I want to talk about, and I, I won't name anybody specifically, but your Republican colleagues. Do they also go like, oh no, what is this? What has happened here? Yes, they do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There are a couple of areas in which you um, divert from your party. Uh, number one, you are against legalization of cannabis uh, for recreational use. You oppose that. Mm -hmm. uh, why? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong with me, exactly. So um, I realize my views on this are not exactly in line with... You'll with never win case. California if you don't no, that, this out. That's true. Um, <laughs> so, look, I think the part of the impact of when you're talking about the law is to make sure that you get... The, the border case is right. And I do have concerns about what uh, an increased availability of legal marijuana means for adolescents, what it means for folks that are um, struggle with addiction, uh, well, mental you, health and addiction. Are you also against alcohol? Because it seems like those very same things apply. Uh, so I don't drink, uh -huh. um, but oh. obviously it's okay that everybody else does. And I think, Jimmy, it's, uh, it's something that if we're gonna move towards legalization, I think we've gotta be we got to be thoughtful about what that means. We moved already. It's yes, been moved. We have. It, it's moved. So, and part of this is the, the federal process on, what, on this, the, the federal law and the structures on the federal law are completely incomprehensible, right? Okay. And what Jeff Sessions and this administration are doing are making it worse. So I just think if we're going to move this way, which clearly, uh, you know, California's there, my home state of Massachusetts is there. I, right. I acknowledge the fact that, <laughs> there you go. I acknowledge that I'm an outlier on this. I just think it's something that, we want to be careful and deliberate about it as you go forward. I don't want to waste all the time on pop because it really doesn't matter. But I do want to ask you about health care. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Bernie Sanders it w believes in Medicare for all. You also, you're against that. No. No? No. Oh. So, one, health care is a right that should be enjoyed by every single family across this country, period, full stop. Um, and I have worked very, very hard over the course of my time in Congress to make sure that everybody does get access to quality, affordable, accessible health care. What we've seen also over the course of the past year and a half is that the details matter on this. And there's a couple of bills out there in Congress that I think um, those details aren't exactly quite uh, done up yet. And I've got concerns about what that means when you actually try to implement it. There are ways that we can go about doing this. We have universal, essentially close to universal coverage of healthcare in Massachusetts. We've got 98% of people covered. Um, we need to make sure, look, the basis on this, um, I quote you on this even though I've never met you before, right? needs to be this idea that every single person in this country 
nobody should worry about whether they can afford to save their child's life, right? Period. The most powerful country in the world should be able to do that. Healthcare itself uh, in this country, I think it boils down to a fundamental question. It's how are we going to treat people at their time of deepest need? It's something that people don't think about very much until you need it. But when you need it, it's the only thing you think about. And we have the ability to make sure that nobody is denied because of a pre-existing condition, that we can, in fact, make it accessible and affordable to everybody. We want to make sure, I want to make sure, that we do that in a way that is responsible, that is accurate, and that covers everybody. And I think we can do that, but I think we've got to be thoughtful about it. That's all I'm asking. All right, well, go do it, because we need you to do it, okay? Hey. Okay. Thank you very much. Congressman Kennedy, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings.